Hello and God bless you. I've been wanting to do this for so long. I literally have this burning desire in my heart for for honestly like a year <laughs> to sit here and like make this video, but you know, it took a lot of strength and a courage to come on here and do this. I don't usually do videos like this but i really wanted to and i feel like uh somebody could really need this um and um, somebody needs to hear this and so i'm just gonna let god speak through me i'm gonna let you guys just get to know about me and my walk with god a little more and so here i am today um a year later after being saved by the grace of god what is going on with my hair by the grace of God to share my testimony, how everything happened, how I came to God, um, and how I just completely gave my life to God and started living for him. Um, I literally, like, uh, more recently, I've been really wanting to do this video. I literally rehearse what I'm gonna say in my head. Like, almost every night before bed, I'm just like, what am I gonna say? You know, and I'm going to be completely honest. I'm going to leave um, a lot of stuff out because I don't want to um, bring other people's names into it. Or, for example, um, tell, like, family business or too much. I don't, I'm not going to get too crazy in, in depth, but I'm going to scratch the surface and... Um, and hopefully, you know, when the time is right and God, you know, puts it in my heart that I can share my full testimony, I surely will. There's also some legal reasons why I can't share some things, which is, you know, it's another part. But everything will come to pass in the name of Jesus. So um, let's just get into it. Um, I like can't believe I'm doing this, but okay, so... I kind of want to take it back all the way to, um, you know, when I was a little girl, I grew up in church. I went to um, a Christian church, uh, but I was actually um, baptized as a baby into Cath Catholic Catholicism, Catholic, I don't know what it's called, but my dad's side was actually Christian, mom's side was Catholic, but I grew up Christian and going to church as i got a little bit older i think i got super influenced by school and friends and pop culture and trends um but i was still in church i remember loving jesus as a little girl i literally have notebooks honestly i think i could find it hold up <laughs> okay so i got it this was my diary journal when I was like 2011, so I was 11. Like my first entry was like, uh, I'm going to vacation Bible school and I have like little prayers in here. So like seeing this now is just amazing how, you know, God has been with me through all these years. And it's just literally a manifestation of the scripture, you know, bring up your kids in the way of the Lord. And uh, even if they depart from it, they, you know, they will find their way back. But, you know, I remember loving God, um, but I was also young and I didn't understand. I, I remember not truly understanding a lot of things. You know, I was a kid in terms of understanding because it was in Portuguese. Portuguese is my first language, but some things were confusing to understand. But again, I was in school at this point. I'm in middle school. And if y'all know that middle school, I mean, it wasn't like crazy, but it was definitely um a year of like getting to know new things being introduced to little cliques and da 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 you know i was heavily involved on social media since i was literally like 11 yeah like 10 11 i had like a facebook i had an instagram ever since i was on it i followed a lot of people a lot of people followed me back i think i gained a lot of popularity i came up with this at name called basically juju i wanted something cool i was like obsessed with tumblr and i thought that people always had the coolest names and i literally like researched for hours and 
came up with this like memorable name, which was very memorable. I remember it being a thing um, in middle school, like eighth grade, especially as I entered high school where, you know, you would go out and people are like, oh my gosh, are you basically Juju or vice versa? Like that's how we would know each other. Um, even if we didn't meet people, we'd meet people through social media and that was just a thing. Back then I would post very, um, not, I guess, provocative pictures for a young girl because um, I was just heavily immersed in like my culture and being Brazilian and that's just what I grew up around. I didn't think too much of it. I was young. I was literally like 12, 13. I just went into high school like I was um, all that in a bag of chips. Previously, before even getting into high school, I met like this group of people. I think that really set a tone and a mark on myself because these people were already in high school. They were like sophomores, juniors. I think some of them were seniors. So I think it definitely like allowed for different people across different age groups to kind of know who I am, especially through social media, because that's how we would post things and post what we're doing. Growing up, I always was the five-year-old hanging out with the eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds. I was just always hung out with older people. Even in high school, that definitely reflected. Um, I admit that, you know, I always wanted to be plugged in with the right people. I just, I liked to go out. I liked to be involved. I liked to be invited places. I desired that attention. I would hang out with, you know, this group of people and then I would also hang out with another group of people outside of school. So I had like various friend groups. Like a lot of the things that I would post and say, like I didn't even know what they really meant. I just would hear it and thought that that's what was cool to say or that's what was trendy. Um, like even hook up, like I would tell people, yeah, like I hooked up with this person not even knowing that what it meant was to have sex with somebody but in reality in my head because i'm like 14 i thought that hook up with someone meant to you know kiss them very early on in my freshman year of high school i definitely caught a bad rep very quickly and the people i would hang out with um and because i was older uh, i was friends with older kids and older people I was the freshman going to Getty's in uh, during spring break and during the summertime with 17, 18 year olds. I actually stopped going to church. At this point, I was doing some things I shouldn't have been doing. Um, I was like, in the church but because of like the stuff that i would do outside of church you know the people from the church would talk bad about me i would hear from other youths like oh this person said that about you this person's mom said this about you and i i just knew that people would talk i feel like i heavily never was told why what i was doing was wrong it like fueled me to do more and like to not care and it pushed me away from the church after um, I turned 15, and that was the last time I saw anybody from my church. After that, I never saw them again. I never went back to church. My parents would go to church. I would never went back to church. So I fell away from just being in church. But like I mentioned, I felt like I didn't really understand much. It was just like, it became a routine and I was just like, okay. I saw a lot of things in the church that I felt like didn't represent um, godliness, holiness. So it was just, it felt like an act on everybody's behalf. There was like a few people who I saw like, wow, like they definitely carry an anointing. I just like fell away. I didn't care. My freshman year also, my parents got divorced. And so I think a lot of my actions bounced off of that i um, very much stood on my mom's side when they got divorced because my dad did not condone with my actions very rightfully so as a father you wouldn't want your daughter at 14 to be doing these things and and posting these pictures on the reverse my mom was okay with letting me go out so in in that retrospect like i definitely sided more with my mom 
just more stuff that happened i just felt most comfortable just be with my mom i thought like i had control i thought i was grown i would grow up taking care of my brothers a lot so i always felt like this sense of independency and i was my own person i can handle it myself like i'm good like i don't need i don't need you like i think a lot of my actions reflected off of that and just i think hurt from the divorce and just things that were said to me sophomore year i'm doing my thing not really caring i don't go to church anymore and at that point i'm not gonna lie it felt good to not go to church to have that responsibility like oh i have to go to church on sunday that sounds horrible to say but that's just the truth at this point like i just feel free i feel like oh like i don't have that obligation that responsibility sophomore year i got introduced to weed in middle school i remember kids talking about it i remember seeing a bag of weed on the floor like in sixth grade in the hallway and i was like what like and i would smell it on the halls like i was already familiar with what it was at the age of like 11 which is like so crazy and terrifying to say me and another friend we hung out with these two boys i was given the opportunity to try it so i was like cool or whatever let's do this at that point it wasn't like anything serious i didn't think of it like oh my gosh i need this like that's never how it starts and i remember mentioning it to my close friends like oh my gosh like i smoked on weekends when we would hang out and there would be like little parties you'd be like oh my gosh should we do this i think i started smoking more like recreationally at the end of my sophomore year especially in the summertime transitioning into junior year um junior year junior year was when things really took a downfall in my life so junior year it was good i had a nice little group of friends you know we were doing everything with each other in the summertime so it was just like a good time these were like my ride or dies um they were always sleeping over i found myself in a situationship i met this person who i thought was so cool it was like literally an infatuation like i felt so quick i was kind of at the age where it was like everybody was having sex and i think always in my mind i was like oh i'm gonna wait for marriage but if it happens it happens like you know i never understood why waiting for marriage was so important and uh, I lost my virginity to him and at this point through the years there had already been various rumors that I slept with this person I slept with that person that I lost my virginity to this person and that person but that just was never the case um there was just a lot of things that happened that I'm not gonna get into um, I was skipping a lot of school I was not going to school and I was in dance activities after school um, and stuff like that and i just wouldn't show up to practices i was missing really important tests it just it just was i was like not doing good i was just i like had checked out and he was a very heavy weed smoker like dependent so um me naturally being around him a lot i just became that too so it became a very very normal thing for me to do on the daily and i think i became very dependent on it a little bit more down the line i my mom met my stepdad and she decided to move um to the other side of the city at this point i had made the decision from my parents divorce to live with my mom i had to move as well um and I had to switch schools. At this point, I'm very naive. I'm very, I have like this ego to me. I'm like, no, like I am not switching schools um, and I'm not moving in with my dad, absolutely not. So I was just like, fine, whatever, I'll move, but I'm gonna be homeschooled. So that's what happened. But at this point, I'm like so sad. I'm like starting to fall into this like s state of depression. But I did it anyways. I moved. And what's the, the stupidest part that is like so annoying is literally my dad and my mom lived on the same street. I really, I really could have sucked it up and moved in with my dad. 
but like I said, I had way too much pride and I just, I was like, I'm not doing it. I became homeschooled, but I was not doing any of my work. I just couldn't like, I've always been like really good at school, but like I was just out of it. Like I said, I was checked out. I was not doing anything, like literally anything. I was just more interested in smoking and um, chilling. Like literally I was doing nothing with my life. There was an incident one night. I was smoking weed with this boy um, outside of my mom and stepdad's house. We got in trouble. <laughs> I got in trouble. I skedaddled out of there. Um, I was like, I am not staying here. I don't want to live here. I don't want to be yelled at like that. I don't want to be treated like that. And I got taken back to my dad's house and so i left but my mom when i went back to my dad's house she told my dad that the reason why i was coming back was because i smoked weed <laughs> me and my dad's relationship was already not the best when he t when she told him that my dad got even more stricter yeah my dad was so strict but because he was so strict it caused me to be even sneakier and I was sneaking out, sneak, sneaking him in, um, doing things that I just shouldn't have been doing, going to Miami, uh, going into clubs. I was just always smoking. I was smoking at my dad's house. I would have weed in the house, disrespecting his house. At this point too, I was super depressed. Like. I just didn't really feel like myself at this point. I didn't have friends. I wasn't in school. There was a lot of things that were going on that just was not good. It was not healthy for me. It was not healthy for my relationship. So, you know, that dragged into my senior year. Because I had moved back in with my dad, I was able to be re-enrolled back into my high school and i was like yes like i get to go back to school because i had way too much free time on my hands i was <laughs> i was still so depressed like the first semester of my senior year i was going through it bro like i was literally going through it like it was bad i started realizing that i would feel very anxious without weed um so i would smoke more at this point my senior year i became friends with two other girls and those were like my girls and they would smoke a lot too so it was just in retrospect it was good for me to have like that girl time and they were speaking like some sense into me i like desperately just wanted to do something all the time with girls because i hated being alone i hated being in my thoughts like being stuck in my mind because i would just like my my thoughts would go off the wall at this point i'm still not a drinker i don't drink like i think at this point there was only one time my junior year at a party where um i got like really drunk like embarrassingly embarrassingly drunk but i still didn't drink i was like more of a smoker my preferred um, medication was to smoke my senior year i'm still kind of going through it but i'm starting to get out of that depressive state i opened up to my mom about that i told her that like you know i felt in the past couple months i had been really depressed it was sad like i was a sad girl like and i was always so negative and like a lot of people a lot of my friends didn't no longer want to be around me because who wants to be around that they're all they were all about good vibes positive energy joking around having fun and i was like always the negative one and like who wants to be around that new year's came and we're going into 2018 and i don't know what it is about the new years but you know the new years really just sets the tone for people and like them if they've been in a situation they want to get the heck out of it and so that really just was me i think i was just like okay this is annoying enough is enough i was still in the situationship and there was a lot of things that just like wasn't good it was very unhealthy very toxic so um after new year's there was some things that happened and a lot of things that were said to me that i was just like 
all right like i still had love for this person at that point still and i was still trying to make us work but it was just clear to see that it wasn't so i kind of kept my eyes open incident happened um and i'm not gonna go into details but with that person and another person and i was just fed up i was like why am i doing this to myself at this point and like i was brewing with anger on the inside of me i was like crazy you know mode i was like Ugh. bet bet that up i completely spazzed like <laughs> literally sent the message blocked and i slept until the next day and i woke up and i felt like so out of it like i was like oh my gosh like it was the weirdest feeling ever i was like you know i'm on my own thing but you know i'm still very like i'm getting out of that depression i'm still like you know taking those steps i remember this person telling me to boss up so i always kept that in my mind i was like pet i'm gonna boss up like i'm gonna boss up on you i'm gonna boss up on everybody who doubted me so i had this crazy ego um 2018 for myself my senior year after that point forward was my glow up boss up year where i was like all about myself and uh, i uh, found my passion for video editing i would say pretty quickly like a month after i cut this kid off i like <laughs> i bounced back so quick i felt powerful like i started to love myself again who i was and i heavily like liked attention i loved going out and people would stare at me and i was like oh yeah i forgot that i was that you know like i forgot i was that girl the term goddess was like heavily used in 2018 and i just really embodied that <laughs> i rebuked that my ego was like at its peak that year it was that was crazy um i was going because i was 18 at this point so on weekends i would go to like west palm i would go to West hollywood i would go to miami orlando i was just doing it all I don't even know how I graduated because I was skipping so much school. That, you know, carried on for a long time. I was just doing me. I was going to raves. Um, I was getting lit. I was having so much fun. At this point, I didn't have any anxiety attacks anymore. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So when graduation came, I was like, <laughs> I was like, dang, like that went fast. I'm graduating. I'm about to like have my own apartment um it was just crazy like everything was going so fast and i was like dang and i'm over here thinking that like you know i'm gonna move and i'm gonna continue living my best life i thought i had it all planned out my goal was to move to orlando i was going to get my bartending license and start off as a bottle service girl and i was just going to get into the clubbing scene um bottle girl scene so when i graduated you know that moving date came so quickly next thing you know i was living in orlando um i had moved in with my roommate brie my sister in christ now god changed her life transformed her life glory to god for that which is crazy <laughs> moved in with brie um we were wild we were having we were going bananas like she didn't start her classes till october and i wasn't in college i was just living out there uh no job <laughs> like we were literally partying every night drinking every night obviously if you move out at that age and you don't work you're broke even the college kids are broke they live off financial aid and barely at that i was really hungry to make money so i started doing some really outrageous stuff to make money and it was crazy because i was getting scammed like back to back to back i was getting scammed by these people and it was just so dumb of me and i was getting like um my banks i was all getting fraud on them um it was it was bad i was like dude like what the heck i remember asking people 
for money. My mom was helping me, my dad was helping me, but it got to the point where my dad um, was like, what the hell are you doing in Orlando? I'm not gonna support you living like this. He was not for it, which I agree 100%. That was really stupid of me. One day I was watching this show called The Act. I remember after watching that show, um, one night out of nowhere, I started to struggle with really intrusive thoughts. And I was like, <laughs> excuse me? And it put fear on the inside of me because I knew that though the intrusive thoughts that were coming to me were not my heart's desire. And I knew for sure that was not my voice. <laughs> I was like, that is not my conscience. I don't know where that came from because I don't, what? Like, what? It immobilized me and it started to freak me out. And I was able to like um, push it to the side and then whatever, continue to do what I was doing. Um, I started getting into YouTube with my friends. In my perspective, it didn't really work out because my main focus and goal was to blow up. I wanted to blow up. I wanted to be famous. I wanted, well, it was like, I didn't want to be famous on that level, but I wanted, you know, I wanted to be like an influencer. I wanted to be a social media star. I wanted to be a YouTuber and I wanted to be invited to like those LA parties. I wanted to be flown out. Like I just, that's what I wanted to do. And it was weird because people around me were starting to get to that. There was people that I've been around who were on that. I had um, in my apartment complex, there was people who knew people or people who were already on that and would go out to LA occasionally and did have the followers and were doing this, that, and the third. And so the proximity of it was so, there was so much adrenaline in that and like i could like nearly taste it i was like oh my gosh like this is like 100 percent possible and i know now that like when your focus is something like that it's not gonna work because it's not genuine it's not authentic and the industry is messed up because if you want to achieve something like that you got to go beyond and do some crazy stuff that you shouldn't have to do and you shouldn't do at that point i also remember with my roommate and my friends, we would just have really, you know, in-depth conversations. We were really into like conspiracy theories. Deep down inside, I always remember, you know, going to church. And in the past couple of years, I just kind of like, I questioned a lot, you know, um, you know, with all these conspiracies and all this stuff that you, you know, hear about our government and all this crazy stuff. So like I knew that there was a higher power, but I just for some reason felt that it wasn't the way I was taught in church or it was like that or I don't know. I just was like, I don't think it's made out to be the way that people in church make it out to be. Now fast forward to um, like February, March, um, I almost got evicted out of where i was living because i literally didn't have money um somebody blessed me and trusted that i would pay them back and i was able to do that but you know there was still that underlying like oh because i was already late on rent it was like oh i gotta pay it again in two weeks and so it was like this cycle i mean after that i wasn't stuck in that cycle again but you know it was just like the the worry of money was always there i started babysitting this baby i babysat him like twice when he was like three months old he came back when he was like six months old he came back when he was like around six months old um and then i babysat him for like four or five months and that's how i was making money my intrusive thoughts kind of started to pick up a little bit more um every now and then um i would feel like this fear like over these intrusive thoughts it would really just scare the heck out of me it was then this random day and i was home alone like no roommates and um i was watching youtube videos and this video popped up on my on my recommended it was um this 
lady um she was maybe a little bit older than me maybe like late 20s i remember her speaking about um how she had this dream and in this dream um like like tornadoes everywhere and um you know she was seeking shelter seeking um a place to hide and everyone around her though didn't care everybody was um focused on this huge concert this huge party that was taking place nobody wanted to pay attention like they didn't care that there was these tornadoes coming i remember watching that video and i became so terrified i was like Ugh. when you're you know going about your everyday life and you know you hear something in terms of god or anything of that sort spiritual um it is very uncomfortable it's very like you you feel you feel the wrath you can feel the what is to come or at least that's how i felt i felt scared and i literally had this crazy anxiety attack like i literally had to call up one of my friends i remember they're like are you okay like why are you just randomly calling me because <laughs> i wasn't the type to just do that and just be on the phone with someone and i was like yeah no i just like i was straight up i just watched this video it was like a prophetic thing and honestly like i am so scared like i was terrified deep down i knew there was this conviction that what i was doing was not what the lord wanted me to do that you know that there was something coming not just in my life but in the world in general and i remember actually when i was back in that situation ship i remember one day we were driving um over a bridge and i was stoned like i was so high and i remember just saying like i feel like something bad is about to happen like i feel like in the next couple of years something really big is gonna start to happen and i don't know what and i just remember feeling so anxious and, and uncomfortable because i knew something was coming and i would dwell on that a lot but i would just kind of keep it to myself and at this point i um, was going through this thing where the weed was doing a reverse on me instead of me smoking to numb the anxiousness and the anxiety smoking was heightening it i can't even like i can't even be present in the moment with my friends because i'm literally internally freaking out about the world everything that's happening and at that point nothing big was happening but i just had the sense that something was happening and i was experiencing these intrusive thoughts so i was like i have no idea what the heck is going on um in that season i actually had to take a drug test um actually i had already gotten a call previously my dad telling me that i because my dad knew i smoked um that i needed to get sober because i needed to take a drug test it was like great an excuse for me to not smoke that's kind of the start of where i stopped smoking when i moved into my next apartment that place and it was so dumb of me like i don't know what i was thinking that place was even more expensive than my first apartment and i already couldn't afford the first place so i was struggling in the second apartment too even when i first moved in there was a lot of it, there was clear signs that it wasn't going to work out but you know when you just force something it was that situation it wasn't long before i subleased it and moved out three months in i left and i was never there anyways i was still very much struggling with money the only person who was supporting me at that point was my mom i was no longer babysitting babysitting was literally taking a toll on my mental health on my creativity because i would literally babysit from like 7 30 in the morning to like eight o'clock at night it was draining and i only got like one day um or two days out of the week to myself so it was just too much and i wasn't getting paid good enough for the hours i was putting in and so i ended up moving in with a friend into a room and he helped out a lot i never had money for food or anything and they were always providing for me which i was super grateful for i i think it started dawning upon me like what the heck am i doing i was about to turn 20 so i was just kind of like what am i doing like i still have way too much free time on my hands i don't drive i can't work i can't go to school i think i started to realize i don't think i was depressed 
but it was just a very unsettling feeling um the past year of my life like how i literally didn't accomplish much um you know everybody was moving forward and i was just there i was stuck like i couldn't do anything and that also just played a part in my situation but also another really big factor was just my ego i could have really just gone home and done that but i just didn't want to give up i didn't want to give up i believed i had faith that something would work itself out and um, that was that so, like a good two three months in um being in this other place and sharing a room um there was a lot of things that started to happen that were just very scary i would just kind of like mention it to another person and then um i just kind of started keeping my eyes open because it was just sometimes i would just literally have anxiety attacks and just pray like i just be up like everybody sleeping like three four o'clock in the morning and just like pray like um and and this was actually the first time i think i prayed to god in a long long time and i was just like god like i don't know who you are i don't know what you are i don't know your power i told him straight up i was like i'm not into religion i'm not into that whole scene but like i need you like i don't know what the heck i'm doing there's these things happening i'm scared i'm struggling with this like i put on like a guided prayer on my phone and i just sat there and listened to it and like literally took deep breaths because literally like freaking out like i think that was probably one of my worst anxiety attacks i don't know it was just a really weird season of my life and i just kind of would stay to myself but um when people were around i was just you know put on like you know a front a little bit but my situation was extremely uncomfortable was extremely um i don't know it was just weird <sighs> at this point um new year's again is rolling around the corner going into 2020 and i remember um, my goal for 2020 was just to get closer to god i wanted to grow a relationship with god and kind of like seek him like i i wanted to seek god in the year 2020 i i i knew that i desperately needed god and um i think that was like me coming to my senses a little bit that i literally couldn't live doing things on my own that i needed a higher power who is greater than me to guide me to lead me because things were just getting weird and i just i knew that from that time that i just mentioned where i was up praying like three four in the morning that was the first time i really felt god's peace and i was like okay like i knew that he could provide that for me so i wanted to continue to seek him okay i'm here a whole day later because in between while i was editing you noticed that the video deleted the devil is a liar literally i'm just gonna kind of fill it in real quick i want to summarize it because i already edited this and it's so long it's such a long video i'm just gonna continue from that in between basically i was just talking about 2020 and how 2020 was the year that i tried um to grow a relationship with god but i was still stuck in the world i was very much in between i um you know i was stuck in sin and i was pulled by being scared of like i know what i wanted i knew that i wanted to you know just completely live for god but um you know it nobody around me was doing that so um, it was hard to go into a lifestyle change it was always just in the back of my mind and i would always pray to god and just you know tell him that's what i wanted and I was, I was very communicative in terms of like my sins and what I was struggling with and that I was, I knew I was lukewarm. 2020 though was weird, a weird year because COVID-19 happened, but not just COVID-19. I really just, my eyes opened up so much about the evil in the world um, in terms of like the Jeffrey Epstein situation and just Lane Maxwell. I learned about that. I was learning about um, Black Lives Matter and I was just noticing all this evil in the world 
but not just that there was just so much um stuff i came across this documentary on youtube called out of shadows which was a guy who worked in the hollywood industry and he was a stunt actor and he did crazy movies marvel movies james bond movies um he did it all and got to work alongside these crazy famous actors and he just saw a lot of weird stuff crazy stuff he's been to a lot of celebrity homes with lots of weird things in it and he was exposing you know the jeffrey epstein situation and kind of how sex trafficking runs in the industry he touched on marina abram abram of abravik i don't know what her name is if you want to look it up do some research to you your own will i was just flustered with all this stuff about um our our world what it what the reality of it was and i just really saw you know this good versus evil situation and i was like okay god you you have to be real because you know there's this so much evil in this world there has to be good there has to be balance that off as the year went on i had moved into a new place um i finally had my own room i could afford rent i was just happy to be in an in an environment where i didn't feel uncomfortable i didn't feel um there wasn't weird things going on so i was just happy to be in that position later on down the line other things started to occur i don't know there was just so 2020 was just like a heavy year i would say not just for me but with a lot of people um just with covid and and it was just a hectic heavy year and i'm sure that everybody can attest to that as i went home from the holidays um i actually got invited to this three-day conference and i was actually interested in it because i mentioned i was seeking god in the year of 2020 but it was never on this level of like oh i'm going to church i'm i'm reading the bible it was just i would literally uh watch tiktoks and that's how i would get my information which i wouldn't recommend um a hundred percent it's kind of iffy with tiktok nowadays with christian tiktok is what they call it so it was the first time in like six years that i was considering going to church um or just a service um this is where i had left off so i will continue on into that uh so yeah so come back home for the weekend um it was christmas um christmas season and um and then person hits me up and they were like oh my gosh like they just were just you know ranting about how god showed up in their life and revealed themselves to them in such a crazy way and that i needed to go to this conference and i deep down inside already knew i wanted to go but i was planning on going the last two days of the conference but because this person just spoke so highly about how god moved in their life i felt like this it was like this tug like you're going like you are going um and i went on christmas day and i literally went alone and i sat alone and i was just there and it was just the craziest feeling because when I walked into this church, mind you, I hadn't been to church in like six, seven years. So I was, you know, internally I was very nervous and anxious, but I walked in and I felt like this peace just come over my body. And I never felt like at peace like that in a church. But one thing is for sure, I felt God's power that night. I i was surrounded by people who were on fire for god and i'd never been in an atmosphere like that not even at my old church my old church how i i could describe it it just felt very comfortable i feel like everybody was very comfortable where they were at but this church was like everybody was on fire like they didn't care who was to the right to the left who was behind them who was in front of them it wasn't about who was on the stage who was on the podium it was about giving god glory seeing that was so powerful i was like oh my gosh like it was beautiful i was like i want this for myself i want to be this confident in god it was just such a beautiful thing seeing people worship god like so boldly and courageously the first night was very powerful i remember like 
crying like i didn't even wear makeup because i knew for some reason i was gonna cry and i'm not a crier i just felt god's power like it was just such a beautiful thing but it was only day one so it was just like the beginning like barely scratching the surface like i wasn't satisfied like I loved it, but I wasn't satisfied. I was like, I need more. Like, no, I need more. Like, I was, I was so hungry for God. I was hungry to feel that presence, that power. I went to sleep. I woke up. I woke up pretty late. I woke up at like 12, 1. The service was like in four hours already. I just ate, and I remember being so anxious to like get in the church. I was like, I just want to go. Like, I just want to be there. I just want to like be surrounded by these people. Andy picked me up, and Andy was like, I remember in the car andy was like yeah tonight is gonna be crazy and i was like oh yeah like why is that like what's going on he was like yeah don't be surprised if you see like demons um come out of people and i was like <laughs> okay when he said that though like something clicked on the inside of me and it was like i knew that like <laughs> <laughs> like what the heck like i knew that i was going to be delivered like i knew it was coming like it was i was one of them like i just knew it right then and there and i just kind of kept quiet i was like oh my gosh like but i was ready like i was so ready i was like take it away god like take it away because i'm fed up <laughs> I'm, fed up. I'm ready to square up like with the with satan like it's not even funny um so yeah we went it was a blessed service and then i got invited to go to a hotel room after with all of them i went um we ate some pizza uh talked to some people and then randomly i think prophet was like who here has never been baptized and i was like like I haven't been baptized. I had the opportunity to be baptized when I was in um when I was like 12 at my Brazilian church that I used to attend, but I didn't feel comfortable because I feel like I wasn't there yet. I feel like I didn't really understand. They made us take like this whole lesson before we had to like like every week we had to like meet up and like do this thing and i just like my heart wasn't in it so i just didn't do it but i was like yeah i've never been baptized and it was like me and like i want to say like four other people um he was like yeah just stand up come stand right here and that's what we did and he was like yeah you guys are getting baptized tomorrow and i was like i was like excuse me sir um how are you gonna decide that for me like so I kind of felt like iffy about that. I was like, you can't just decide when somebody's gonna get baptized. Like, what if somebody's not ready? Like, and I was just like, okay, I guess, um, I guess I'm getting baptized tomorrow. And then the night went on and out of nowhere, everybody just starts hopping into the spirit and everybody's praying and everybody's just going crazy. And then it happened, like people in the room started to be delivered. It came to happen where it happened to me just like i expected i just didn't expect for it to happen like that but it happened and um, i was delivered from five spirits one was death one was um like lack of emotion which is very true and let me tell you how the lord delivered me from that because growing up people would tell me especially my best friend would tell me that i'm like cold-hearted i always had trouble expressing emotions or just being emotionally available to people but let me tell you he delivered me because this year your girl was a big baby <laughs> so uh glory to god for that but yeah it was um death uh lack of emotion or like something like that um lust was one of them i don't remember the other two but um i was delivered and it was like crazy because like i remember because like when you're being delivered it's like you're like conscious you're like there but it's not really you speaking and so like you're just kind of there watching so like internally i remember like saying jesus like asking jesus to save me to set me free and sure enough like i was delivered <laughs> by the grace of god and like for a split second i just felt like peace well it was not a split second but um for a split second i just saw like 
white like light like it was like god gave me like a little glimpse of heaven like literally and i was just like oh my gosh and literally like peace just fell upon my body like i'm literally getting chills right now and literally peace fell upon my body i felt this like cold feeling in my heart literally in my soul like this cold like like i was like swallowing coldness <laughs> and it literally lasted for two weeks i kid you not like it was the craziest feeling ever but then like after that i was like heck yeah i'm getting baptized tomorrow like there's no way like i after experiencing that and seeing things that i saw there's just no way i can go back to living the way i was like god sh revealed to me so much things it was like my ears were open i understood the words that were being said i like it all made sense it all clicked i was delivered i was i felt the holy spirit just on the inside of me i felt this cold rush this peace and i was like there's no like it's now or never i am giving my life to god i'm getting baptized i uh, i'm doing the dang thing okay and um, that's what happened the next day i woke up i literally I woke up like i got home at like four or five in the morning slept for four hours woke up to get ready to be baptized and i literally woke up and my mom was like where are you going why are you up so early and i was like oh i'm gonna go get baptized you want to come and she was like huh like because i just like it was just such a quick thing like i literally left went to the beach and it was crazy let me tell you as we were on the way to the beach there was like miscommunications where people were told that the baptism was no longer happening it was going to be rescheduled and other people were told that it was at a later time and some people were told that they needed to be picked up but they were already there and it was just so weird it was like the enemy did not want this group of individuals to get baptized but it happened we all got there it was so beautiful outside um i recently posted a video of it but it was so beautiful it was cold but it was so beautiful and we just prayed on the beach we worshiped and we got to baptizing people um i think they were like who wants to go first i was like <laughs> i was so ready and it was honestly an amazing feeling like it, it like it feels amazing to be baptized like and it's just like a symbol of being of your sins being washed away but it's literally such a beautiful thing it was just such a beautiful feeling and then again like it's like that coldness that that feeling of the holy spirit inside of me was like intensified and i remember driving back home with my friend gabby or no we we went to the hotel again after and i remember just sitting in the back seat and like staring outside the window and just like crying like i just couldn't believe how like god just changed my life in a matter of like three days and i was just like oh my gosh like this is insane this is this is beautiful this is crazy like i'm so happy and god just really listened to my prayers and it was just so evident that he was with me that he's been with me that he has a plan for my life and there was so much to come yeah ever since then um i went back to orlando and after that i could say that my life really did change i immediately like set boundaries immediately stepped into this new lifestyle i stepped into loving god worshiping god um uh valeria god bless you she got me my first bible i was just in this process of falling in love with jesus and like i could understand the words in the bible like it made sense i started creating a prayer life for myself through the help of the holy spirit i started taking it more seriously where i would set time aside out of my day like an hour and like really just get on my knees and pray and i promise you that makes the biggest difference um intentionally seeking god on your own time and like sacrificing like oh um i have homework to do or i have this 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 that and the third but you're like no like i need jesus right now you just get on your knees and you pray and and give your time to him our lives are really not our own like we are placed here to do one thing and is to spread his gospel and 
to bring others to Christ because everybody is so worthy of it. You know, he didn't just die for me, he died for you. And um, you are worthy of experiencing him and his love. And, and I find so much joy in seeing other people come to God and being revealed his mysteries. And it's such a beautiful thing. It's been a beautiful thing. Like I just simply cannot go back and I just seen so many crazy things. I've seen so many people get delivered. I've seen literal people change their life around just like I did. And through the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, I've been able to help people come to God as well, which I'm so grateful for. And it's really just for Him, it's for His glory. And I'm just, it just makes me so happy that I have an impact and an influence on people and um, yeah um i just pray that i can have an influence and an impact on you guys i do want to get into a part two on my testimony a year into um, my walk with god there's strength there's building there's character there's um self-denial there's it's literally like a cleansing process and i could say that for the past year it has been just that for me it's been very revealing <laughs> uh to say the least but you know i stood my ground because god is my rock my salvation and in all moments i ran to seek him to pray to him in all my all my troubles because i knew that he was the only one who could sustain me who can keep me and i'm so thankful for that so yeah that is my testimony um that i would love to you know share on a deeper level so i pray that one day that god really just opened up doors for me to be able to get into that um and i just really pray that you know maybe you've been wanting to see god but you were kind of like me you were just kind of questioning i just hope that somehow this touches you and maybe this May encourage you to start praying and just start speaking to him like he's your friend and maybe just you know be honest and maybe ask him to reveal himself to you if you're questioning him because i promise you he surely will so just thank you for listening to me this is definitely super outside of my comfort zone but definitely one of my goals for 2022 is to just create more content that god places in my heart because he is always telling me to do these things content wise and just spread his name spread his fame spread his glory his gospel and i hold back a lot i grieve the holy spirit and you know i just repent for that and i rebuke the spirit of hindrance because you know i know that there's tons of people who probably truly need it who need to hear it feel free to dm me if you want to reach out personally if you need help or if you just have questions i'm happy to help out in any single way so thank you so much love you guys god bless you